Joseph Glanville Joseph Glanville FRS was an English writer, philosopher, and clergyman. Not himself a scientist, he has been called the most skillful apologist of the virtuosi, or in other words the leading propagandist for the approach of the English natural philosophers of the later 17th century. In 1661 he predicted the time will come, when making use of magnetic waves that permeate the ether, we shall communicate with. He was raised in a strict Puritan household, and educated at Oxford University, where he graduated BA from Exeter College in 1655, MA from Lincoln College in 1658. Glanville was made Vicar of Frome in 1662, and was a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1664. He was rector of the Abbey Church at Bath from 1666 to 1680, and prebendary of Worcester in 1678. He was a latitudinarian thinker. Latitudinarians generally respected the Cambridge Platonists, and Glanville was friendly with and much influenced by Henry Moore, a leader in that group where Glanville was a follower. It was Glanville's style to seek out a middle way on contemporary philosophical issues. His writings display a variety of beliefs that may appear contradictory. There is discussion of Glanville's thought and method in Basil Wiley's 17th century background. He was the author of The Vanity of Dogmatizing, which attacks scholasticism and religious persecution. It was a plea for religious toleration, the scientific method, and freedom of thought. It also contained a tale that became the material for Matthew Arnold's Victorian poem The Scholar Gypsy. Glanville was at first a Cartesian, but shifted his ground a little, engaging with skepticism and proposing a modification in Sepsis Scientifica, a revision and expansion of the vanity of dogmatizing. It started with an explicit address to the Royal Society, the Society responded by electing him as fellow. He continued in a role of spokesman for his type of limited skeptical approach, and the Society's production of useful knowledge. As part of his program, he argued for a plain use of language, undistorted as to definitions and reliance on metaphor. He also advocated with essay concerning preaching simple speech, rather than bluntness, in preaching, as Robert South did, with hits at nonconformist sermons, he was quite aware that the term plain takes a great deal of unpacking. In essays on several important subjects in philosophy and religion he wrote a significant essay The Agreement of Reason and Religion, aimed at least in part at nonconformism. Reason, in Glanville's view, was incompatible with being a dissenter. In Antifanatical Religion and Free Philosophy, another essay from the volume, he attacked the whole tradition of imaginative illumination in religion, going back to William Perkins, as founded on the denigration of reason. This essay has the subtitle Continuation of the New Atlantis, and so connects with Francis Bacon's Utopia. In an allegory, Glanville placed the young academicians, standing for the Cambridge Platonists, in the midst of intellectual troubles matching the religious upheavals seen in Britain. They coped by combining modern with ancient thought. Glanville thought, however, that the world cannot be deduced from reason alone. Even the supernatural cannot be solved from first principles and must be investigated empirically. As a result, Glanville attempted to investigate supposed supernatural incidents through interviews and examination of the scene of the events. He is known also for Sadducismus Triumphatus, this enlargement of his blow at modern Sadducism was published after Glanville's death by Henry Moore. The work decried skepticism about the existence and supernatural power of witchcraft and contained a collection of 17th century folklore about witches, including one of the earliest descriptions of a witch bottle. It developed as a compendium from philosophical considerations touching the being of witches and witchcraft, addressed to Robert Hunt, a justice of the peace active from the 1650s against witches in Somerset, the 1668 version A blow at modern Sadducism promoted the view that the judicial procedures such as Hunt's court offered should be taken as adequate tests of evidence, because to argue otherwise was to undermine society at its legal roots. His biographer Ferris Greensled attributed Glanville's interest in the topic to a house party in February 1665 at Ragley Hall, home of Lady Anne Conway, 
where other guests were more, Francis Van Helmont, and Valentine Griatrax. In the matter of the drummer of Tidworth, a report of poltergeist type activity from 1662 to 3, Moore and Glanville had in fact already corresponded about it in 1663. Seduces Triumphatus deeply influenced Cotton Mather's Wonders of the Invisible World, written to justify the Salem witch trials in the following year. It was also taken as a target when Francis Hutchinson set down an historical essay concerning witchcraft, both books made much of reports from Sweden, and included by Glanville as editor, which had experienced a moral panic about witchcraft after 1668. Jonathan Israel writes, In England men such as Boyle, Henry Moore, Ralph Cudworth and Joseph Glanville battled to stabilize belief in the existence and operations of apparitions and spirits as part of a wider drive to uphold religion, authority, and tradition. These and others believed that the tide of skepticism on witchcraft, setting in strongly by about 1670, could be turned back by research and sifting of the evidence. Like Moore, Glanville believed that the existence of spirits was well documented in the Bible, and that the denial of spirits and demons was the first step towards atheism. Atheism led to rebellion and social chaos and therefore had to be overcome by science and the activities of the learned. Israel cites a letter from Moore to Glanville, from 1678 and included in Seducismus Triumphatus, in which he says that followers of Thomas Hobbes and Barak Spinoza use skepticism about spirits and angels to undermine belief in the scripture mentioning them. Seducismus Triumphatus was also translated into German in 1701. The German edition was used extensively by Peter Goldschmidt in his similar work Verwerfener Hexen und Zauberer Advocat. This work brought the Seducismus Triumphatus to the attention of Christian Tomasus, a philosopher, legal professor, and skeptic in Halle. Over the next 21 years, Tomasus published translations of works by English skeptics, John Webster and Francis Hutchinson, as well as John Beaumont's in historical, physiological, and theological treatise of spirits, all of which were accompanied by vitriolic prefaces attacking Glanville, Goldschmidt, and their belief in witchcraft. His views did not prevent Glanville himself being charged with atheism. This happened after he engaged in a controversy with Robert Cross, over the continuing value of the work of Aristotle, the classical exponent of the Middle Way. In defending himself and the Royal Society, in Plus Ultra, he attacked current teaching of medicine, and in return was attacked by Henry Stubb, in the Plus Ultra reduced to a non-plus. His views on Aristotle also led to an attack by Thomas White, the Catholic priest known as Blacklow. In a prefatory answer to Mr. Henry Stubb he defined the philosophy of the virtuosi cleanly, the plain objects of sense to be respected, as the locus of as much certainty as was available, the suspension of assent absent adequate proof, and the claim for the approach as equally an adversary to skepticism and credulity. To White he denied being a skeptic. A contemporary view is that his approach was a species of rational fideism. His Philosophia Pia was explicitly about the connection between the experimental philosophy of the Royal Society and religion. It was a reply to a letter of Merrick Kasayubin, one of the Society's critics, to Peter du Moulin. He used it to cast doubt on the roots of enthusiasm, one of his main targets amongst the nonconformists. It also dealt with criticisms of Richard Baxter, who was another accusing the society of an atheist tendency. Edgar Allan Poe's short stories Legia and A Descent into the Maelstrom contain epigraphs ascribed to Glanville. Alistair Crowley's book Diary of a Drug Fiend opens with a direct quotation from Glanville. Some sections of Shirley Jackson's short story collection The Lottery and Other Stories open with quotations from Glanville's Sagacismus Triumphatus.